Okay. Welcome back, everybody, for um, reconvening our Policy and Projects Committee meeting. And we still have at the table Christo and Johannes, um, and we're talking about uh, the agenda item 6.3, Major Projects Updates. Questions? I have a couple. <laughs> you guys have um, anyone else around the table have a question? Um, 4.1, you mentioned the reservoirs. Um, just the adjustments that were made to the concrete blocks, I'm just curious what adjustments were made and um, was that just another defect from CHPD's contract? Um, Councillor Tritney, so um, the adjustment was made at, in order to um, achieve the PS4. Um, the, the reason for the adjustment was that originally the decision was made to design on pump capacity and not necessarily the intake capacity. When we applied for PS4, um, they, they, the engineers saw that as a as a risk um, because the intake capacity exceeds the pump capacity, and therefore adjustments had to be made to get PS4 and therefore and subsequent the certificate of compliance. So that was a a, a team decision. Okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned in there that the defects have all been um, uh, repaired and we managed to get code of compliance as such. Were all those defects attributed to stage two or their defects from stage three as well? Oh, stage two. So they're just defects from stage two? There, has there been any defects from stage three? No. Perhaps I, I can. There's been variations. Yeah. Uh, so we changed, uh, the council may recall, the outfall pipe um, path was changed. So we ended up going through, uh, we got an easement through the neighbour's land. So we, we had a variation for that. Um, and that, that did have flow on effects to the project and changing the pipe work and changing whether or not we needed pumps because that's now gravity fed. Variations uh, in stage three. Um, the high street rider main. Now it's been mentioned about the traffic management. I was just curious, what was the cost of that traffic management for that? Rider? We don't have the final cost yet. So we'll have to come back to you on that. Uh, we haven't had the final claims yet. Okay, so we just be we're still collating them. Let's just get an idea of what that forty percent. And if it was 40%, um, what it was. And um, the High Street sewer main renewal that's been put off now, um, I've heard figures bandied about of um, 450 to 500,000 for the traffic management of that project. Um, are we still going to be working in with Walker Kotahi? Let's say in two or three years' time, they decide to, to continue with the upgrade of or remedial work on State Highway 2 through that section, are we going to be potentially looking at um, um, coming back to Council for um, expenditure, asking for money to go towards that project because we want to bring it back and take advantage of doing it while Waka Kotahi working on the road? If I may, um, the decision to defer the defer the renewal of the sewer on High Street um, is mainly just because of our budget. So in our um, priorities, we have a number of priority ones with the the budgets available and what we're forecasting in the LTP. It makes more sense to work on priority ones that's not on state highway in order that we can better control the cost. Now, to to answer the question about aligning with Waka Kutai, um, the the sewer the sewer main firstly runs in the in the median, and um, is not a risk to their pavement um, at, at at the moment or foreseeable future. Um, the big risk and alignment required was to remove the laterals, the the water supply laterals from the pavement so that they can renew it. Now. They are going ahead with the renewal of that pavement. Um, we we can't um, with the the current approved budget. We we can't renew that sewer sewer main um, 
to align with their program at this current moment. Um, but it's also it'll 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 be it'll be a number of years before we get to um, that being the only priority one on our network. That's why that's why that that this is or that decision was made. Um, in terms of unplanned expenditure, it wouldn't be unplanned expenditure because it would be part of our network renewal, um, and that's why we are very cautious of the current um, current current economical climate and not wanting to come to council for unplanned expenditure at this moment. Um, I had a question about 4.9, the valve testing. Um, there's a list in there of the biggest risks, but um, I noticed that there's nothing in there mentioned about um, contaminated groundwater ingress. And I remember when Carbon District Council went through the coli um, and with the Boer Water notice that one of the valves failed and it was because of contaminated groundwater ingress. So I'm just curious why that's not included in those lists of risks. <coughs> That's a good that, question. That, that, that is a very good question. Um, that hasn't been that hasn't been highlighted at the um, by by the asset development engineer at this at this time. Um, we will add that to to the risk. Um, however, based on the fact that we can't exercise some of those valves, it does bring it to a high criticality already. So having that added added risk. Wouldn't necessarily change change the criticality, um, but it is definitely worth noting. And just further to that, are we only replacing the valves identified as critical? So they so further to Councillor Ailing's earlier question, we're constantly updating the conditions of our assets in the asset management um, database and this will this will now move some valves to the top which previously wasn't to the top so this information basically restructures the priorities in that renewals Good. any further questions comments hey thank you Christo. appreciate the report yep good stuff in there um we have one recommendation and that's that we Receive the review. Please, uh, Councillor Della and Councillor Ailing. All in favour? Okay, Aye. Aye. Against? Very good. Thank you. Um, item 6.4 the one hour water project. Manus, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So we for the last 18 months, we've been very clear and to the fact that we won't we won't um, progress projects if we weren't confident that we can deliver it within the approved budget and we wouldn't start projects um, if there's significant risks and this committee is not informed of it. Um, as such, the the one hour process water project was um, was endorsed by this committee. We agreed that um, that we will go through various steps so that we don't don't um, start a process and can't complete it. Um, and this is why this paper is uh, is in front of you. Um, we have worked through the the various various gates and as the as suggested in the report. The, the risk profile has increased quite significantly um, and which changes the whole, the whole um, business case for this project. And that's why that's why the recommendation is to stop this project. Um, yeah, and I don't know may if you I, want may to. I add um, I as information. Like so, uh, one of the challenges we face is increased cost uh, as part of uh, our investigations towards that increased cost. We've reached out to uh, Kanoa to see whether or not they would 
entertain the idea of increasing the grant fund and the answer to that was no. Um, however, that reaching out to Kanoa has um, has led to other conversations in uh, Wellington NZ, uh, of which we, we know WEDS, um, have come forward and suggested that uh, this is a key project for them. They would like to see it continue and that if council were uh, going to continue that they would be able to or or they may be able to add a hundred thousand dollars towards uh, the cost increase um, to offset that impact on Carterton ratepayers. I have to say I have not reached out to Masterton in terms of increasing their contribution as of yet, uh, and I presume they're under the same rating pressure as as all councils in the country are. Uh, but I haven't done that as of yet. Uh, I wanted to table that uh, WEDS at, and the Wellington NZ Forum have come back and said, you know, if we do wish to continue, they may be able to help contribute and offset that cost up to you know, the region of $100,000. Sorry, that's an update uh, since we've written the paper. Questions? Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> is the... Carterton District Council um, contribution if this project was to go ahead. Is it in the LTP? No. At this stage, it's not in the LTP. So that would be an impact on top of? The, the project uh, timeline was meant to have been completed by June this year. Uh, so if it if it was uh, sticking to that timeline, uh, it wouldn't need to be part of the LTP. It would just be part of an existing asset. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just ask about the discussions with JNL? Because are they aware that um, their stance in terms of what they are prepared to underwrite means that this project is unlikely to go ahead? That we are unlikely to have access to the Kanoa funding in the future, and that they are therefore saying they don't care if there's a dry year and they have to stop their production. Is that what they're saying? Uh, not quite in the same <laughs> words, all of that. Uh, uh, but I we have certainly had a conversation. I've had a conversation with JML that has indicated the reduced demand for. For raw water, processed water in this case, uh, is jeopardising the project, and that it may be that the project is withdrawn. Uh, so they are fully aware that that council is considering options on this project, and that their reduced revenue, their reduced demand for raw water, is a key factor in that. Yeah. I'm also very conscious that uh, rejecting Kanoa funding is. Um, it is something that you don't do lightly, and uh, the once bitten, twice shy thing with with grant funding from central government um, uh, it may may come into play. So that is a, a big concern of ours. So. As we should. Yeah, and thank you, Jeff, because um, the comments all, that have already been aired, I share, um, and it uh, concerns me, and and I'm taking on board some the submission from the former mayor uh, this morning. I fear that there's a greater risk in our cancelling the project outright, whereas a pressing pause whilst we seek more information around what other options may be available in a restructured car noir with considerably more funding and ministers who are keen on water projects are going ahead. Um, I think the ground, like I said earlier, the ground is shifting. Um, I have just been made aware that the one of the ministers responsible is going to be here in the water apron on Saturday. And uh, I've got an opportunity to catch up with him. And maybe we can have a conversation. I, I just think if it's possible to have that catch up and have a conversation to test the air and see what other opportunities might be available, it might be a better position to be in 
than just purely cancelling that and telling Carnor we don't want the money. I would think our ability to approach them again on a different proposal okay. after this might not be good. And I'm just trying to mitigate and offset that. If we end up in the same position as this, what this recommendation suggests, then cat pie, so be it. But I don't. I'm struggling to see why we wouldn't, why we would jump to a decision right now. That's it's all because I'm not sure that we've teased out the opportunities that we're managing as well as we might be able to over another couple of weeks. Our main challenge has been the time frame that Kanara yeah. have given us in order to complete the project. The, the time frame uh, is, tight. is particularly tight, and we would be unable to complete that now. Yeah. Just to to add to to the risk. Mm. So funding isn't the only risk. Yeah. The risk of actually being able to do this is um, a key risk. So the the geo, geotechnical report on the bore is that that site's not not ideal for a bore. So so the 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 source is a big risk. So we might go and. Um, bore and do investigative um, spend money there, and and not be able to take what we what we want to take. So that's a, that's a significant risk that's changed from the inception of this uh, product project. Um, so it's not only 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 um, the finances. Yeah, and I and I get that, and I'm a, and three really must here. And you know, I'm. I'm aware there are other bores in the area. I'm aware that other bores have been put down. Yep. And so it's clear that it is possible to put down a bore. The question is around timing, money, the ability to do it. If the ground has shifted sufficiently to allow us to access funds, then how does that change the picture? And would cancelling the project right now be a case of, would that be seen to be short-sighted two months from now? Uh, we could go down this, what I'm suggesting. We could press pause. We could consult further. We could go and engage in Wellington. Um, we could have conversations with people and end up exactly where we are now. Or we could cancel it now and miss opportunities and then be kicking ourselves a bit later on. And and I am in all this discussion where we're talking about water storage, water resilience. There are <laughs> meetings going on everywhere. We use three-hour meetings here and three-hour meetings there. This the the potential here to offset building resilience, to provide water storage, to provide industrial water and potable water from there. I just think it's 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 a huge asset that deserves a little bit more time. Councillor Dell. Uh, yeah, thanks, um, Steve. And um, yeah, I I um I agree with what Ron um has has just said. Um it's it's a timing thing. Um, the the biggest risk I see um, is 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 we're, we're not going to be able to complete it with that in the time frame that we've got available now through Kanoa. But the the main risk is the bore and and the actual um, the ability to find enough water that's not contaminated in a safe place. Um, I uh, I think we've got to look at. Other options, and and this is what the uh, the central government is saying now that perhaps we should be looking at ponds and water storage in a pond situation. We've got an ideal opportunity there where we've got gravity fed water from a river, um, from a river through a water race system, and and you know if we dug a um, constructed a one hectare pond there and filled it in the filled it in the uh, in the winter, like like we need to do, and then reticulate. After that, I think I think that's the way we go. It's going to take more planning. It's not a short term thing, so I, I think we need to probably, as as Ron says, investigate more. And um, you know, it's an ideal situation to have a big storage lake pond or whatever you call it up there. And as for Mr. Chairman, through you, I mean, what Councillor Dell is talking about is exactly what the late Graham Tullock um, suggested to us many years ago. And um, and the ability to create uh, an open lake pond 
um, for water so we can utilise that water. But at the same time, as he was talk, advocating, the ability to create walkways around it and in a recreational facility is something that, you know, it's visionary stuff. But ruling, ruling options out right now, I think, and not considering more broadly, um, using the fact that we've already got approved funding from Carnot and we're not saying we don't want it, <laughs> we're asking, are you prepared under the new government and under the new policy changes to allow us to shift the project or widen the scope or change the scope of it, um, might be worth doing. May not get us anywhere. We may still end up here. But I just think that there's room to investigate further the support guns sort of dollars. Just want to mention as well that currently the demand is not there. Yeah. And 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 with the in recent years we've seen a drop in demand because they because the landowners can drop their own bores. Um so that's just another consideration. We might be able to option here a different solution. But it won't change the necessarily change the demand. The demand is an unknown what it might be or what it could be. Um, but the 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 use of processed water, the demand for um, non untreated water in an industrial area in that industrial area is actually very low. Okay. Yes. Um, so just Following on from the uh, feedback from the councillors with regard a pause, um, one of the risks I see here is that all of the risk burden falls on the smallest council, Carterton. And the challenge for us taking on a project of this size where the benefits will be seen across the wider community of the wider rubber is that this the smallest council is bearing all of the risk with this project. And so perhaps your suggestion is that we find other ways to try and spread that risk a little wider uh, so that it doesn't fall on us, um, I think would be very prudent. So just further to that, on what is the risk of Mass and District Council actually cutting that water supply and then it falls on us anyway that we have to find one hour of supply? Uh, th that's a, a very good question, and uh, as we've discovered with just road residents, uh, you have to go through a referendum in order to disconnect potable water supply. So I think the likelihood of Masterton going through a referendum and disconnecting Wainawa is relatively low. Although the risk of a natural that's right. disaster, be it earthquake, whatever, mm -hmm. Is very high. It's still there. Mm. Yeah, it's still there. And and I think and I and I hear what you're saying, Johannes. Like the demand for the water at the moment isn't there, and we don't know what future demand could be. But if we had that supply there, then we're opening up huge potential for more businesses to come. And it's like the old marketing adage, you know, you have a funnel, and the bigger your funnel, and the more you pour in at the top the more will flow out the bottom. Whereas if you don't have foresight and look to the future and plan to the future and take some risks and only put a few little drops in, nothing's going to come out the bottom. And um, I, I just agree. I think this is an opportunity for us to be considering the future. And I'm not talking 10 years. I'm talking 20 years. I'm talking 50 years. I'm talking about the sustainability and it is, it's a huge step, I get it. I think um, it would be great if um, our neighbouring councils could also see the benefits for the whole of the Wairarapa and um, not just in this project, but in a whole load of other projects. But it, it's, it's. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gutted to push stop on this. Mm -hmm. I think um, the, the potential is still there. Yes, the risks are really, really high. But the potential is huge. And as Ron has mentioned and alluded to, you know, potentially there may be some um, arms he can twist um, over the hill and we can possibly increase that funding. I guess my 
my question is regarding the Kanoa funding. What is our absolute deadline? And is there an opportunity for us to extend so we can actually just, and I know it's more resources from you and you guys are already stretched, and I, I really acknowledge that, but we have somebody sitting around this table who has contacts. Can we actually put that person around this table, we'll crack the whip and put him to work and um, see if he can just get some of those conversations happening? Deputy Mayor Williams. This this report is exactly what we asked for, so thank you, because we said bring it back to this table at every gate and give us the the unfiltered cost benefit risks so that any decision council would make we were in full view of all everything available at that time. So this is great. And I guess on first read, it's almost a no brainer. Well, it, in fact, the Times Age figured that when they reported it four days ago that we'd made the decision. But interestingly, I had a call on Monday from um, a person who uh, said there's a very big difference between cost and investment. And he advocated, as the former mayor Greg Lang did earlier, advocated really strongly that we not be hasty in our decision around long, medium to long term investment, that the demand and the risk may be very evident today, or the low demand, high risk evident today, but that's not necessarily an indication of potential. And I responded to this person, well, I was in your kitchen three months ago when you were hammering me about sewers and rates going up and so forth. <laughs> There's a serious cost in here that ratepayers would need to bear. And again, he, this person reiterated to me, don't don't um, misunderstand the cost versus investment. And again, hearing hearing Greg and comments at this table, it's um it's a fascinating conversation. Well, people are thinking if I might chair look mm -hmm. perfect point. Um, and I want to add in just some thoughts around the industrial park and where it's going and opportunities that have been put before us in the past and an opportunity that may arise in the very near future. We have no idea right now of what it is that's deterring people from investing down in Wainawa, but the one thing we do know is whether it's an industrial development down there or a residential or a retail, a massive retail with warehousing or a mixture of any of those, water is going to be key. So our predictions around what we're currently, our, our commentary around what we're currently using and our projections based on current figures may have no relevance. Um, if we don't put in the infrastructure, then how do we expect people to have the confidence to come? And water is key. So if we end up at this, the same space recommendation to in a month from now or two months from now, uh, and, and if Kano will give us the time to do some more work, then, you know, and, and we end up there, then so be it. But I just keep thinking, I absolutely endorse Councillor Cherry Campbell's comments. Um, we need to be thinking way forward, way forward, not just three years, five years, 10 years. We need to be talking 20 and 30 years forward. And that has been one thing that this council has been very good at compared to many others who surround us. That's why we have the wastewater treatment plant where it is. That's why we have the water reticulation system where it is today. That's why we're future proofed out to 2050 and 2043 in different phases. And I just think that we, we need to be a bit bold. Um, we'll give ourselves some more time, breathing space. I had a couple of questions, Johanna. Just um, you mentioned in there on 4.2. I'm just curious when were Mana Whenua first approached to consider this project, um, and when 
did you anticipate that they were going to provide a decision as to um, whether they supported the project or not? Because that, to me, um, their support, whether they support it or not, could have quite a bearing on this because that could um, hinder the resource consent application. So I, I would have thought that that would have been a big consideration to have in this as to whether they support it or not. So we we spoke to um, both iwi um, probably in yeah just just before September, um, but it is noted that the the from the representative of that meeting was against the against the project um, from Rangi. However, um, at during that time we haven't heard anything back from them. So. Um, with the state of the of the project, they they were the um, Manafina wasn't um, pushed to make a decision. So or contacted contacted again. So we, if it, if it is the wish of this committee that we still continue, then we could um, continue down that track. Um, seems like day before this event. Um, I I do understand. Uh, some fears of uh, of my family, and uh, they've represented different views. But um, it comes at any dinner, um, uh, at any time of the day, yeah. Uh, but um, part of it is that are we scoping uh, for aquifer use of water uh, for farms? And so that, that's a, a different way. And, I try to say, well, it's way better use than uh, than a dam because a dam you'll lose a lot of water and just uh, from um, um, from water coming up from the air and that's been held there. If we are thinking, what's the price of a dam, and do we have an do we have a, an alternative, and that alternative is already built and it's got an extra. Uh, then you know um, what type of saving are we making there? Um, there, there has been a uh, little suspicions in, in terms of people who were um, perhaps uh, pressing for a dam. So the the major major differences, of course, for me is that while one might lead it, uh, uh, that doesn't mean they are the only use water. And so here's the opportunity to use water. Um, and if we were associating that with the industrial uh, um, park, um, because that's uh, where uh, some of these things are located, um, then uh, it's perhaps I was asked to think about uh, what kind of industry uh, we could be working with. But if there's two things that they'll need is energy source and water. And, you know, the whole range of energy, any, uh, um, places could be there if we're thinking about one of the richer people here in the valley uh, in terms of Fari Koho's owner. Um, and can we actually convince them to do something other than buy um, a sports team for Auckland? <laughs> um, and so um, uh, Bill Foley is, uh, uh, is um, somebody who's actually got more wealth than um, Mr. Cameron, and so um, there's some of the opportunities that we, you know, we we could think a little more seriously about. And really, uh, it's over to the council to, you know, uh, one is having the resources, two, it's actually turning that resource into a viable package. And I think, you know, we're down the way of, um, uh, say, let's just say JNL. Uh, if we can improve all of our lands by having uh, homes um, that are kid set homes coming out of jail now, um, then, you know, is that a part? And so it's really, I think, uh, the next step is the real step for me. Is so, yeah, whether you like having the resource or not having the resource, you can't deny it's there. And then so what do we do with it? And that's uh, that's our opportunity. Um, so I, I did hear 
that, that uh, worship the mayor and uh, uh, CEO were heading to Wellington. I did hear that there's a minister around, um, you know, um, and some people are a little f afraid of the, um, the, the type of economics that are associated with the government at the moment. All I think is that it's an opportunity to widen our economic base. Uh, so you, you can do economics one way, you can do it another way. Um, I don't know that it's either or. You know, that's for political parties. When we actually think about our own families here in, in Wairarapa, uh, we'll, we'll take that um, as an end. And then it doesn't matter what government you are, you still got both systems running. Um, but I, I think it's the opportunity, um, uh, Mr. Chair, for uh, us to think about what that is. And so um, I don't mind saying that some of our whānau have only seen one opportunity to make money in Wairarapa over the last 180 years, and that's been far. But, you know, if we were thinking about IT, um, and with those people that I've already mentioned, and Mr. Jackson, of course, um, then, you know, you and you were thinking about um, energy circuits in terms of what's developing in terms of uh, in, uh, in renewable energy farms right now, uh, you can start to think about a whole range of opportunities. And please, those aren't the only opportunities. Um, but when some people talk about how you make money in New Zealand, investing in property is one, farming is the other, and some of our whānau are stuck in those possibilities. And just think, you know, here's an opportunity uh, for us in Carterton to say, how can we develop something? Um, you know, uh, I, I watch with interest a whole range of uh, New Zealanders uh, over in Saudi Arabia uh, and Abu Dhabi in terms of the uh, sailors and in terms of a boxer um, and um, making plenty of money there. And so our traditional markets could be different. Uh, why do we have to keep on selling to the same people? And so, look, uh, in terms of um, uh, the report, yeah, that's accurate, what's just been reported in terms of uh, new Arangi. I thank you for the invite in terms of uh, thinking about um, Indigenous peoples. We, uh, we are with a group that have um, uh, settled, got their feet under the desk, thinking about what investments they are about to make. Um, uh, yeah, we could go to um, some of the farms that we've got in the middle of North Island, but they didn't do too well last year, but they're better, better in this one month this year. Um, and so, yeah, so um, in terms of uh, spaces to go, like, you know, even if we were going down the traditional farming, uh, what would a quality product like baby milk powder be instead of uh, um, um, milk powder salts? I mean, um, the, the opportunity to add the, to the help of countries like China, et cetera, and just waiting there for us. And personally, and sorry that I'm giving you my economic drinks, <laughs> um, but, you know, between here and Chile, I don't know that we get um, as much return on investment as we could be getting in terms of fish. Um, so uh, I, I just think that there's a lot of opportunities and that um, having a pack is only saying this is a place we can work from. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, I could advise the committee through you, Mr Chair, that uh, CE and I did have a meeting with uh, Ngāti Kahununuki Wararapatamaki Nui Arua. Uh, in that meeting, we discussed their uh, situation with their investment uh, arm. And I just think, and I did ask if there was a project, a water project, would Nona Wood Kahununu, would Rangatani be interested in investing? And the answer was they would look at it, mm. definitely look at it. So I just think there's room to grow. Um, and, and we just need time to do that. Like I said, it's... Thank you, Jules. Um, I just had another question just around 4.11, the risk assessment. 
the the A to um, A to M. Was it N or M? M? M. Were they all in the initial report yes. that was provided to us? And yeah. you've yeah. So not, there's been no additional risks added to that. No, it was. Uh, I think M M was the new one. The the um, no, that I think M was M was there. I think I did elaborate on on the risk a little bit more. There's more more information that's come come about. Okay. Any further questions or comments on the report? We have a two recommendations. The first that, and we'll take them separately. The first that we received the report, Dr. Merva. Thank you, Councillor Chair. The second, uh, thank you, His Worship. All in favour? Aye. Yes. Okay, and. Recommendation two, that council terminates the project with immediate effect. Do I have a mover? I don't have a mover, so that recommendation fails. Can I potentially suggest another recommendation? Just trying to find words on my head. That, um, council to continue to invest other, uh, to examine to investigate other sources of revenue or continue discussions with Carnor to find it to do anything. Council continues to investigate the project further. Investigate the project further. Do you like to think we'd like to move that? Does that give enough direction as a recommendation or would a recommendation be? Uh, so are we recommending that we need to establish whether we can get more funding towards the project or it, is, is that what the crux of it is or is it that we still actually feel the viability of this project? Because I think, I think the recommendations need to be a little more. I think you're honest. You're not just making funding. funding. It's not just about funding. It's also about the timeline uh, and Carnor's limitations. I just have a further, maybe if there can be even more clarity. So, um, Your Worship, you mentioned that we need to consider other options. We could consider a dam or whatever. So we, the scope of this project is to um, repurpose the existing tank, and I wonder if we could consider. If we're then thinking broader, could we consider other options as well? If do we need a resolution right now, or is this could we have this? I think that would be in, uh, encompassed in the investigate further options. Mm -hmm. um, I, perhaps if I if I may chair, um, we could add a timeline to that by asking the uh, management bring back a report to the council meeting on the twenty seventh of March, which would give us. Roughly three weeks. Then up time. Um, investigate further options and report back. Yeah, and and during that time we can certainly reach out to Kanoa, uh, Marston District Council, exactly. uh, and we may be able to get some feedback from where central government are at in terms of their views. Um, and provide council with a further report on the twenty seventh of March. Is that sufficient time? I don't know. What do we think? Well, it certainly give me enough time to reach out to Marston another month. Kanoa. Um, the, the uh, it will give us feedback. We we should be able to get feedback from Kano within that time as to whether they will extend beyond the end of June as well, which I think would be worthwhile. If we are keen on this, I would I'd keep my recommendation would be to keep a shorter timeline so that we are constantly uh, informed as to where things are at, rather than letting it. And we need to ascertain where Kano stand with regards to their extension of the time frame because mm -hmm. they are putting up. Oh, sure. Five million. Okay. Investigate yeah. further and produce a report on twenty seventh of March. Moving that. Yes. Robin, did you hear that? Yep. Seconded by Councillor Della. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against. Kerry. Thank you for that. Thank you, Hans. Thank you. And now we move into another article. <laughs> <laughs> Item six point five. On page 
So um, I'll, I'll, I'll take the report as read. This, um, this is really an information report, just to give a little bit of context of what the what the maintenance contract or the Romanga Roads maintenance contract is, and um, because there might be confusion around um, other alliance contracts. Um, and and this is clearly not an alliance contract. Uh, the 3917 million value contract um, we the the contractor has certain scheduled items that they have to complete. They present a, a, a program to to the Romanga staff and um, which is then approved. They can deliver the work um, that's approved and that then gets audited and it's paid accordingly. Um, but this is really in for, for information, so happy to take any questions on that. Thank you, Hans. I'm not him. Well, Councillor Della. Yeah, just yeah, a couple of questions, Johannes, for you. Um, a really good report, and I I understand it, um, which is really good. Um, <laughs> you the, uh, <laughs> the thing that, um, just a couple of questions. Um, are you happy with the, the way the, the system is working um, at the moment, number one? And the second one is, I think it would be really beneficial if we had an interactive workshop. So, so to the councillor Diller, to your first question on, am I happy with the way that this system is working? Um, can, if you can maybe just elaborate the the contract with Fulton Hogan, the system of having a shared service, um, maybe. Oh, I'm you know just more more um, more about. Um, the actual program of work that is set, and um, and then achieving all those goals within that those timeframes, because I know in the past that some of them have lagged behind for various reasons. I I would say that I'm in in terms of delivery model, I I am inclined to be pro. 3917 measuring value contracts. I would, um, and therefore I would be, I would say I'm happy with the system that we've agreed on. Um, we we have to, we have to continuously improve the deliverables under the contract. And that's a, that's a journey that um, Romanga's road staff are on with the contractor. Um, but I wouldn't suggest changing the, the contract model between the engagement with a with the a maintenance contract. Yeah, thank you. Right. Um, is the title by six point five a spelling mistake? <laughs> Bruh. I if I can double check that and if it is, I do apologize. Oh, no, it's, it's not about apology. You would see the translation there is a hundred twin roads. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just thinking you were perhaps blue sky thinking or something. <laughs> um, if it is a spelling mistake, that is a that is my mistake, and I do apologise for that. And I will. Can't be. Or Steve would have picked it up. Right, put it down. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Rod. <clears throat> you know. yeah. Johannes, I, I have a um, just a question around the. Um, let me get this wording on. The performance and contract evaluation, which has been introduced, um, I'm just curious um, what was used prior to the PACE um, being introduced so that for, so that we could see where the Fulton Hogan were achieving their, did they have KPIs they had to, how do, how do we measure them previously? So the, the PACE was always part of the, the, con, of the Romana Roads contract. I'm not too sure I, I can find out what was done before this contract. Um, in terms of KPIs, they you would normally put that in, especially with lump sum payments where they're the required to deliver um, 
specific functions and it's all covered under uh, under a lump sum. We've we're more um, we have measure measuring value um, items scheduled items. So um, whatever they do, they get get paid for, and it's it's not a not similar to to a KPI. Um, Perhaps uh, in addition, Johannes might be able to explain uh, each month we get an invoice and uh, what you go through in order to audit that invoice and the quality of the work done yes. for that particular month. So yes. given that it's measure and value, mm -hmm. so we're paying for types of work done and, and we measure the work done and we, we pay us a prescribed value for that work. Mm -hmm. uh, so measure and value means that uh, they've done a whole bunch of work for the month. They send us the invoice and say, we did all of this. And then Johannes and the team go through an audit process to double check that, that that's actually what happened and it's of the quality required. I think Jeff covered it really well. So yeah, but they, they will uh, send someone out to drive the network and pick up on, say, um, you know, we'll, we'll identify sections of, of work that have been done and, and the team will go out and audit that section of work uh, and making sure the quality is, is of the expectation that we require. So how soon after that work is finished or those various jobs are finished, is that done? And is it then done again? Because, I mean, it, something can look perfect a week after or four weeks after, but three months after or six months after there's failures from that work that's done. So I'm just curious as to how is that work re-looked at? So, so it's probably not re-looked at as uh, intentionally as re-looked. However, it, through network inspections, it is it is noticeable. So for instance, if, if, uh, if work was done um, in January and it failed in May, five months later, four months later, the fault will be identified and the fault will be recorded on the same asset. Um, so and that's where it's being picked up, and and they can the contractor can't do um, they they can't do work again on without without the team being aware of it. So that would then be, would be within a defects liability period. Um, but the the audit is normally within with within about two weeks of the claim being submitted or presented. Um, and it goes through the audit process, and we 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 try and we do a, um, a audit of a percentage of the of the claim. Um, every every month's claim has roughly anything between 400 and 700 jobs in it. Um, so we um, with our resources, we can't do a 100% audit on on the on the claim. Just sorry about this, so Mr. Chair. The six point six going to be done separately, presented separately. Um, yes. Yeah. I just do see some connections, and I'll wait till we connect them. Yep. yep. I don't mind saying when my pet hates the KPIs. Uh, self fulfilling prophecies. Sorry. The self fulfilling prophecies. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Well, um, and I, I think it's, uh, I think the, the fact that we're using um, performance methodology, a measure and value contract and an audit on the top of it for the monthly claims um, gives us comfort that what we are getting is, is of the quality we expect. Um, Johannes and I did a drive uh, the other day, the, the Thursday out, um, out to Craigie Lee Road um, in and I, um, Johannes, I'm sure you don't mind me talking about this. So um, on the drive out there, uh, I asked Johannes, you know, I'm not a roading manager, tell me what you see. And so the whole journey we were, you know, talking about a dropout here or, or this is what's happened here or that's going to be the contractor who needs to fix that on their own cost or that's a cost for us. So uh, I think, you know, when... Um, when you understand the amount of work that goes in behind the claim process, and, and as Johanna said, somewhere between 400 and 700 items a month 
um, you know, there is uh, there is some uh, a lot of thinking and a lot of checking that goes on to make sure that we are getting our bang for buck. I mean, I'm a little more familiar with roads that have yeah. had about ten or fifteen years of maintenance, and just kind of thinking, are we sinking money into? something that else is going on that we're patching all the time. And some of that is about geology. And that you, you and so I'm I'm interested in six point six because it looks like a couple of geological opportunity kind of struggles. And that one of the things for me about quality is that quality helps to improve stuff along the way so you're doing a job that's that you're finishing well but you're also able to take on things that have just been a headache for years that you're going to get a solution to and so um uh, that's that's why i was uh, thinking about 6.6 because while i've got the theory of performance in 6.5 i'm staring at a couple of roads that i'm thinking uh, is that the ongoing in terms of what's worth? And, you know, the, again, I go back to geology. If the geology is the wrong place for a road. How long do we keep on fixing the road? And there's, there's other roads about what enough to be better examples of that. And the road out to Castle Point is just one of those. Kerosene Hill is another. Um, just, but uh, that's. And for me, if I was looking for improvements, um, I'm looking for a cut of costs uh, because you've done the job better at one time. You're not having to go back there. I, I'm thinking that might be too simplistic, but I'm happy for you to comment anyway on that. Yep. We're, we're still on 6.5. Yes, so that's the next the report. This report and then to 6.6. Do we have any further questions or comments on uh, this agenda item? I just wanted to make one comment that um, I'm certainly interested in learning more about the Rumahunga Roads contract and just the mainly just what's included in their regular maintenance um, schedule for that that they have to complete annually. So um, we say in the next step we we say that we could do a could do a council workshop. Um, Cool. And um, yeah, we I, we didn't put it in as a recommendation, but that's maybe a recommendation to be added in. Or an action. Or yeah. an action. 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 Okay. There's no further questions or comments. We'll move on to the recommendation. And that is that Steve the port report. Do we have a mover and a seconder, please? Uh, Deputy Mayor Williams and Councillor Della, all in favour? Against? Carried. Item 6.6, .6, Rumahanga Roads and Corridor Access. <clears throat> um, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, right, uh, just want to point out, at least I got the spelling of Rumahanga Roads <laughs> right there. Uh, that's, a, that's a significant improvement in between two Two reports. Good to see you taking that <laughs> in <meet> your classes. <laughs> um, so this, uh, with the previous report, just talks to the contract. This uh, talks to more of the activity in in the month of May. Um, we we highlight a few um, actually some of the deliverables um, that that come out. For instance, fixing 20, 20 bottles. Um, as a whole, the the last three months of drier weather has been fantastic for um, for getting getting work done, and um, uh, we're also happy with where our expenditure is is to date. Um, this is a significant year for in in routing terms, as it is the last year from the LTP funding from Wafikatai as well for this LTP. So it's more. Um, it's more strict on how you can move move money, um, so we are confident that we will be able to deliver the program of works um, with the budgets available towards the end of the financial year. Um, and then I would like to point out in 
currently in the low cost, low pro, low risk program of work. So that's an approved budget with um, as part of the LTP. Um, we we have identified um, a few areas where we can make safety safety improvements, and the intersection of Longbush and Millers are one of that. Um, or, or one of those. So we've dug up an old um, safety or uh, safety design recommendation, and we're currently reviewing that to and uh, make some adjustment to address some of the behaviours that we've seen in that area as well. But that'll include the raising of an island, things like that. So just to restrict some um, driver behaviour in in that area. Um, the team's also working on. Uh, Finally, extending the the culverts on use line, um, and then we'll see the widening of a section on Wilton's Road as part of the pavement rehabilitation program. So, even though that's a different work category, the low cost, low risk part is the little section that we're widening. And then the last piece on the low cost, low risk is to extend the footpath on Brooklyn Road, um, which is also going to be a good good outcome for the community um, and then in terms of um, just maybe touch on the geology of our emergency works Ra. Um, we with the way that we approach the emergency works damage we we take it a little bit of a different approach to 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 others we we don't try and gold plate um, every slip um, where we try and be more pragmatic in the use of resources available or use of space available and just um, treatments that's worked in the past pretty, pretty well. Now, even though on our network it's a higher risk option, it is a significantly lower cost option. What we've seen on our east coast or our eastern roads, like Tefara Road, yeah. is you could repair uh, a dropout um, fantastically, and then with the next event, 50 meters down the road, you've got a new section that's failing. So to go um, a full bore on gold-plated geotechnical designs. Um, from our perspective, would be um, wasteful expenditure. So we're trying to be pragmatic in the way that we do it. Um, and it, to date, it seems like our approach is working reasonably well. Um, we are also trying to stabilize the environment around these vulnerable roads, like, for instance, the Tefara Road, where we've done significant pole planting last season. Um, so we'll continue to work on improving the resilience of these areas so that we're better prepared for the next event. And open for questions. Thanks, sure. yes. Questions? I have a question here, Alice. Just, I think we're doing, a, as a council, we're doing a fantastic job of looking after our roads. A number of our roads lead onto State Highway 2. What concerns me is, and whether this is part of the report or not, up for debate, I suppose, is State Highway 2's lack of sorting out the road between Carden and Marston. I mean, we're looking after our roads and ensuring they're suitable, well, capable of um, handling our vehicles and so forth, but Wakakota here leading us down on our state highway, which is potentially forcing people to use our roads more so is there an option i'm just probably more the ce <laughs> are we able to send a letter just to walk party just asking well um just letting them know how um, bad the road is and and um because it does fall back on us a lot of the commentary i mean some people do say that no it's what but a lot of People still believe it's Carden District Council. So mm. I just find it quite disappointing that they're potentially they're not doing any more work there. Um, mm. Mm. And the surface is really bad. It is really bad. I can probably mention that they are I'm aware that they're planning to um they're planning to do repairs on that section of State Highway to fix their the pavement. And I believe that is coming in, in March. Um, so they are planning on it, but I think maybe if 
Good. Thing brand new pavement. Mm. Again, well, my, my my worry, just further to that, Steve, my worry is that when we finally get rain, is I, I can see that state highway being closed mm. because of with the roundabouts where water ponds now with a gentle shower, when we get torrential rain, honestly, I, I see that road being closed, which it never has in the past. So I actually think the work that they've done in some places has made the road worse. <laughs> Um, Mr Chairman, I'm going to have to leave. I've got some staff absences, so I have to be back at the shop by 12. So I can. That's an apology. Please accept it. It's gone on a little long. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Indeed. Yeah, I'll be back at your excuse. Yep. So um, we can we can definitely reach out to to Wakatai or to NZTI Wakatai and. Um, and get their, Thank I think it would be helpful to get their forward work program for that particular. Um, we'll get a report on yep. what they're doing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any further questions for Johannes on this corridor access report? I've probably just got one comment, and I, and I don't know it's probably more than ops thing, and I apologise for raising it. But, um, the, the signposts. Um, that do get knocked over or either by wind or or by um, people running into them. Um, I've noticed a lot of them, or most of the ones that get knocked over are a, a solid iron post, you know, a four by four post. That some of the newer ones are now a tantalised laminated um, post, and they, to me, that they are a hell of a lot stronger. As have you got any um, any preferences of what you're doing? Are you using um, posts with a cube of concrete around the bottom of them, or what are you doing? Um, the the preference is to use where where it's still usable to use the existing. Mm -hmm. So for as for as long as possible, we would we are repainting repainting posts. Um, but then as we we don't have a particular preference, but the timber post at the time was the, the most efficient. If we yeah. if we start renew renewing them, putting new signs in, then the the newer ones would probably be used. Yeah, it's just replacement that I'm sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. His Worship. Yeah, just following on with uh, Council Adela's question around signposts. Um, are they responsible? Are Fulton Hogan responsible for um, making sure all the speed limit signs are clear and 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 are visible? So is their job was that council. So so no. So that is a so that is a scheduled item that they can complete. So they would be very happy to identify any sign that's not um, that that's not reflective enough, and then suggest to replace it and we'll pay for the replacement of them. Or it's obscured by trees and foliage. Yeah, so so that is within within their work work um, scope of work. So if a if a sign is um, obstructed, then um, it can be identified in the program and they'll do it and we'll pay for that. that part of their job and their normal drive around inspection to be picking that stuff up and stuff or they're relying on you to tell them or they're relying on rate payers to send a service request in because I would have thought it's a combination of all three. So they do an all faults program where they where they pick, um, identify um, faults that they see, then there's the faults that the Romanga Roads staff identify and see, and then there's um, then there's faults that's identified through the service request process as well. That all goes into into the all faults program, and then that gets uh, gets prioritised. Could you just follow up on that because there's quite a few uh, speed limit signs that are totally obscured, yep. and there are quite a few signs that are totally covered in lichen. And are difficult to actually read, and um, I sort of thought some of those speed limit signs on Lincoln Road would be quite obvious actually if so they're driving down there. Any further questions or comments? Yeah, <laughs> okay. We have one recommendation, and that is that we receive the report. We have a mover and a seconder. 
Thank you, His Worship, and Deputy Mayor Williams. Uh, all in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Okay. That brings us to the end of the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for your perseverance. And Ra, could I call on you, please, to do the karakia? Aye. 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 Toma, thank you, Kweepa, Mote Huine, Moa Te Rohi, Taratahi, Menga Fano, O Taratahi, Kiore Pamo, Mote Mote Mto. Kaha moto, kaaro moto, aroha, ma ihu karaiti, amene. Amene. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.